Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Bonnie and Temple Art and Mecca for inviting um, me here today. My name is Julie Horn. I am the Visual Arts Director at the Maine Arts Commission. Um, and as part of my job, I uh, also run Maine's Percent for Art program. How many people here have heard of Maine's Percent for Art? Oh, good. Good, good deal of you. So today I'm going to be a little more nuts and bolts about what it is and how it, how it works. And then a little more about sort of on the state level and public funds uh, when it comes to um, public art. So um, what's the Percent for Art? Uh, program. What's that about? It's um, they're set up um, by entities of government to take a small amount, unfortunately, a very small amount of the overall construction budget for a public building um, to be used to purchase work and put it back on that very specific site. Um, Maine's law was um, created in uh, 1979, and it is for one percent. Um, we encourage people to add more to that if they would like, but I haven't had anybody pick me up on that yet. Um, so it also, the law also said that established that Maine, the Maine Arts Commission would sort of be the overlord of this program. So we established the policies and the rules uh, for sort of running it. So I'm going to take you through the basic process, uh, which I think a lot of people don't know what exactly happens when you have a, a project. What is it about? soup to nuts. Uh, and the biggest thing that comes up is it takes um, the timeline. It takes an, a year, on average, a year to get through one project. So I have a lot of artists, um, unfortunately, that call me in sort of waiting about, where are we? What's going on? I put that in a month ago, and I haven't heard anything. And so um, just an awareness sort of campaign to say, it takes a while to get through this. Okay, It's kind of art by committee, good or bad. So the first thing that happens is we have to establish the budget. So usually the main Arts Commission gets contacted. I get contacted um, from everything from a superintendent to a principal to the architect. Really, the architect on the job, it's their responsibility when they're creating their construction budget to have a line item for 1% that's earmarked, set aside for commission artwork to go back into that site. Um, so once we have a budget established, and that can be anywhere from $3,000 to, you know, $150,000, okay? Just de depends on the uh, construction budget. So next we put together a selection uh, committee. And this committee is hugely important, important because they decide pretty much everything surrounding what's going to happen in this project. Eligibility, locations. So. Um, uh, Jim was talking about having some national artists come in. This committee decides whether they wanted people from, artists from the city, artists from the uh, region, from the state, international, international. They get to decide all those parameters for the RFP that's going out. Um, and that selection committee is made up of um, generally five voting members. And that's always the architect, two site people, okay, these are the people I say have to live with the art. Okay, two people that are going to be on that site. And then two arts professionals that we get to pick at the Maine Arts Commission. We appoint people. And I want to let you know that we're very serious about choosing our art professionals. We pick people specifically from the community where the art's going to go back into. Okay, we don't travel a group of artists uh, that, or professionals that we like and, and sort of run them around the state. We actually research and really pay close attention to people that have their thumb on the pulse of art in their community and we get them involved on the selection committee. Um, so we get together as a group, and they set up sort of, like I said, all the parameters for what goes in that our request for proposals. Um, and then the Maine Arts Commission, we market it out, we collect the applications, we bring the applications back to the selection committee, and they review them and score them on very specific criteria. So this isn't just a discussion about, I like this one, I don't like that one. They have very specific criteria in which to evaluate those proposals against. Um, and they decide there which ones are, they're gonna move forward for finalists. We contact the finalists. Finalists have to come in and make a live presentation in front of that committee. It's 20 minutes, just like I've got. Gotta get it down. Hopefully I will. Um, and then the finalists get their presentations. Voting members decide um, which uh, artists, artists or artists um, they would like to give those commissions to. Um, 
And then finally what happens is the Main Arts Commission and the site have to give final approval before it goes to contract. So the Main Arts Commission decides, uh, gives approval on the process, not the artwork. So the Main Arts Commission has to say, yes, you, you um, uh, did this fairly, you know, uh, equitably, equitably and, uh, and it was transparent. So we approve of the process that was used. It was fair. Um, whereas the site gets to say, we approve the artwork or we don't approve the artwork. Um, and these are just a couple of really quick stats, and I call them shareables. Just to let you know, uh, we were talking about economic, uh, economic drivers earlier, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, this is a very healthy um, program that's putting money back into public art and artists. Um, so Maine, first of all, is one of 28 states, actually, in the country that has a state-level percent for art program. I came here from Tennessee, which did not. Um, Tennessee relied on the smaller or the larger cities in Tennessee to take care of it themselves. But at a state level, they didn't do it. So Maine, wonderful, yay Maine. You guys have, uh, now I have as well, um, a state that, that really um, um, feels strongly about public art. Since 1982, um, this, this program has generated uh, $8 million in funds for public art. And that money goes into the art, uh, hands of the artist, right? Um, very little of that money has anything to do with administration. It's all about paying, giving artists money, okay? Um, we've done more than 475 projects. It's a lot to, to keep track of, quite honestly. Um, and I should say that we are a collecting institution, so the state of Maine does not have a collection of public art. We administer, that's our job, we administer projects, okay? But those pieces of artwork eventually are owned by the site, not by us. So we aren't responsible for them maintaining it or keeping a collection of it. Um, it's employed approximately 850 artists, um, again, Know, every time the call goes up, we get a great broad spectrum, and any project can, it's not just, each project doesn't equal one artist, okay? Each project can equal, they can choose one artist, they can choose five artists. It's however that committee wants to slice and dice it. Um, uh, it's truly, this is a statewide program. It's in 175 communities across the state and in all 16 counties. So everything from, you know, Fort Kent to Sanford, it's, it's there. Um, approximately 900 works of art it has generated, and I want to say that about 80% of those are in public schools, um, which is incredibly important, putting art right in front of students. Um, and currently we have 22 projects going on from now to, to um, 2020. When I started at the Maine Arts Commission in 2013, we had one project, one. And in 2014, it blew up. And no kidding, I was getting a call um, once or twice a week from architects saying, I've got a project, I've got a project. So it kind of went crazy. It just went crazy, um, which is a great thing. And we're very happy for that. And we're turning over approximately 10 projects a year, but they just keep coming. So these are what I'm, I call in the queue. They're projects that we are aware of that are either starting or going to be starting within the next year. Um, <clears throat> I'm a visual learner, so if somebody says, just go to the website and, you know, it's there, the opportunity is there, it doesn't really work for me. So I like to get sort of a, a sense of like, what's it going to look like when I get there? So if you want to find out about current opportunities that we have going on um, that are available for you to submit proposals, go to mainarts.com. And this is the sort of... Um, uh, overlook of what our website looks like now. We just changed it over about a month or so ago. So we'll have the lovely new uh, logo on it. And then you want to go under the programs header and you'll find public art percent for art. So this is the page that you'll go to. And um, at the bottom of this page, it'll say current opportunities and it'll list out which um, projects are going on. When you're ready, you think, oh, okay, I, I think this is pretty good. Click the submit proposal right here on the end. Um, at the bottom of that list. That's how you're going to go right into the system, get ready to upload that, your, your application. Um, and this is where it's going to take you to, it's called the Grants Management System, but this is our system for uploading all your applications. It's one of those standard things where you're going to create a login and a password, 
you always go back to it so you can keep your application up and floating. And it's a place to uh, submit it as well. Um, required materials. Um, this is pretty standard, I think. It's very simple, believe it or not. I think most artists already have this stuff ready, already have it available on your desktop, ready to go. Um, the basic things you have to have are a resume, right? One page written proposal. Um, the first round of proposals that you submit can be very simplified. We aren't paying artists for that first round, so we don't feel like you should spend months laboring over this proposal, okay? We just want a, a brief site overview of what you're doing, maybe sketch. Um, and one thing that I want to say, just a basic tip, um, is that that one page written proposal is incredibly important for you to pay attention and be sensitive to the information that the committee has given you in that RFP. There's something, there's an area called background in the RFP. That the, that's the area where the selection committee has decided what's important to that community in that particular site. They're telling you, this is what matters, this is what makes us unique. These are the things we want to focus on in this artwork. And I can tell you that the artists that are sensitive to that information and customize their work according to that are always the ones that rise up to the top and get it. So if you're an artist that just had your standard style and thing that you do and you try to make it appear like it's part of their community, it's not going to work. These people are really smart, I got to tell you. So really pay attention to that. You have to give an itemized budget that's pretty standard as well, according to whatever amount of money you are asking for your work. So if some artists come in, it's a $150,000 bu uh, budget, we'll say. Some artists come in and say, I want the $150,000 and here's what I'm going to do. Some artists come in and say, look, I only want to offer up two paintings. It's $15,000, okay? Here's the basics of it. So whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you want to propose. Maintenance plan, I can tell you, everybody says occasional dusting. That's, that's <laughs> almost, I'm not, it's 99.5% of a maintenance plan is occasional dusting. So be sincere in that, what it takes. Um, five dig digital images of your um, most recent work, and again, an image list that um, supports that. Um, so moving on and going a little bit broader, um, I'm, I'm really representing the state level. I'm not necessarily representing the city level. Um, and I think probably, I'm hoping that this isn't, that the audience is made up of totally Portland-based artists or administrators. Maybe we're going a little bit broader than that. So this comes in handy um, more for you. Uh, so beginning the process of establishing and supporting public art um, in your city, how do you do that? How do you do that as an individual? What, what needs to happen at that basic level? Um, and usually it's, it starts with um, uh, establishing some sort of city ordinance around it. Um, and I know um, Portland has its own ordinance, but believe it or not, there's a lot of, of small towns in Maine that don't have this. Um, so if you want to get a city ordinance going, here's some basic um, steps that you can take, which is do your homework, okay? Find out about um, what, lo what the local laws are, um, understanding what those laws are about, um, or if there are even any laws, um, and, and visit your libraries. I just wanted to say, like, that's the place to go researching. Go to your historical societies, go to your libraries. They can tell you all about what precedents are there and what's not. Um, and next, write your proposed ordinance. And I say find a, um, a model for that, but the truth is that you need to find a model of a city ordinance for public art that is one related to Maine, related to Canada, Maine, because every state is different in their own rules and laws. And two, it needs to be pretty current, okay? Don't use one from, you know, 1962, okay? Because a lot of things have changed since then. So look for a model that's current and, and it is um, in the state of Maine. Um, and, it's, and if you look out there, there's a lot of language. It's really important to pay attention to the language. It's good to have a city council person help you craft it, and maybe if you've got a friend who's a lawyer and understands the speak, probably good to have them look it over as well. Make allies. Um, I think this is the biggest thing that artists can do, is sort of rallying that grassroots and getting support, getting support of the arts community to show up at places, say they, they um, agree and they support it, it's always great to have numbers and allies. Um, and know your opposition. I think that kind of goes back to do your homework, is knowing your opposition. Um, 
knowing who are the people in your community that probably aren't going to go for this, right? And sometimes those are pretty easy to identify. Um, who are the people that are, don't feel strongly about wanting this as a part of their community? Their priorities are different than yours. Um, then, of course, you have to find a councilman. I think it's better to draft it with a council person if you can. Um, but ultimately, you kind of have to get it, jump, jump into the political game. You want to find a council person, do some more research, find council people who are sympathetic to what you're doing and have probably introduced similar, um, thank you, similar um, ordinances or, or bills to go forward um, that are sympathetic to our like what it's about. We had a, the mayor here earlier, clearly with his background. He would be somebody that would be an advocate for you, um, and they have to introduce it for you. Um, and once um, it's been introduced, you got to keep advocating and lobbying. Um, you got to get in there and play the game. You got to be contacting your officials. Um, <clears throat> you got to be mobilizing people to contact those officials. Uh, you, you sort of start the whole movement. And I know right now, in our current climate, everybody knows how to do that. We've all been educated on how to get in there to the process, how to get in there and get your voice heard. It's the same thing for, for art in your local area. Um, attend the public hearing. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people in my own community, my own council, people who have said, they just didn't show up. I don't understand. They want this thing to happen. Nobody showed up for it. So it's important that you put your butts in the seat at these meetings. Pay attention. Um, and then just continue your advocacy. Um, make sure that that grassroots group that you put together, all your allies, are all working at the same time. They're all pushing with the same message um, to get the to get it passed and get support for it. Um, just a qu quick other ways to get involved. Um, if if you're, you've already got an uh, an ordinance, is um, get involved with the mayor appointed public art committee. Um, to help develop a master plan. Um, once an ordinance has gone through, and we all understand it, we, you know, they support it, it's gonna be law. Um, what generally happens next is that they, uh, the mayor selects a sort of, um, appoints a, a, a committee specific to public art, um, and they start to develop a master plan for the city. Uh, it's important that you you can always contact the mayor's office with your credentials and say, I really need to serve on this. I really need to be a part of this. You know, here's what I've done in the past. Here's how important it is. Here's how I can be involved. Um, and just kind of advocate for yourself and push, kind of get yourself, get yourself in there. Um, you can also contact and work with an established city arts council or commission. Um, again, there's sort of, there's the large main arts commission, there's also smaller arts commissions that exist within a city or a small arts council that are maybe overseeing some type of public art program. Um, <clears throat> present your own self-initiated proposal. I don't think artists realize that they can do this. Now, it doesn't work within the main percent for art program, but I don't think artists realize that you can come up with your own proposal. You don't necessarily have to wait for that call for if you know your local arts council and you know this is what they do, they do public art, you can actually propose something to them. Okay, You can come up with your own wonderful design, ideas, budget, and put that forward, present that to them. Um, and I think that another thing that artists don't realize is that you can, you can bring in city departments to help you if you determine that there's a specific site that you want the work to go, if there's construction going on in that pro in that area, you can always contact the city and say, look, you're gonna have a, a front, you know, and hauler right there. Um, I just need to get this thing moved from here to here, or I just need this um, thing dug up, or I just need, you know, some, some type of um, uh, electrical, or, you know, I'm trying to think of like all the different examples, but, there are things that the city is already doing and they have the equipment and the people and if it's not too far outside of what they're doing, generally they're pretty agreeable to things. Um, uh, okay, and contact local university and colleges for possible par partnerships. I've seen it be incredibly successful where um, artists are interested in doing a piece and they just need more people. Okay, I need more volunteers, I need more people to help me achieve this. And so they contact the local university and the professor who has some type of, um, you know, sculpture or design or um, community involvement program already going on. 
and again, they've got tools and people and power, sometimes even money, um, to help you kind of realize that vision. So, you know, reach out to the people who maybe have, in the infrastructure, who have a little more time and money and the ability to help you um, with your vision. Uh, <laughs> and then last, I, I um, wanted to talk about something that we are doing specific to Maine's percent for our project, and that is that um, <clears throat> for over 30 years, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, Maine's public art projects have sat in binders in a big case um, in the back corner of the office, all as individual wacky hard copies of projects that have gone gone forward with notes written on napkins. And um, so we just don't have a wonderful searchable database for what's been happening with Maine's percent for art. And so we um, have determined to move this forward and make it a priority in our agency that we that we create a searchable database for the public on all these amazing projects and what we've done. So we're working with um, the library and archives who already have this um, <coughs> technology and the infrastructure for this to happen. And so through wonderful um, uh, colleagues that I work with, including Diamond Duryea, who's here, um, and she's sort of heading this up, not gonna lie. Um, she's working um, with another assistant you know, probably I'd say 50% of her time is just working on digitizing all those documents, okay, all the napkins, um, receipts, written receipts, and getting them into, um, so, that it's, so that it's a documentation and it's an archive back to Maine of what's happened, because right now it's just kind of sitting in our office, not so great. Um, last second, opportunities for looking for, um, specific to public art, you can sign up for our um, Mac um, emails. You can also contact me to be added. Um, I have a, I actually have a list of about 170 artists, public art artists, mostly in the state of Maine, um, who just want to know when, so, I mean, asking you to constantly go back to the Maine Arts Commission and keep looking for those possible opportunities, I'd love for you to do that, but that's just not realistic. So I offer to put you on an email list. So I put you on that list, and as soon as the opportunity comes up, I send out the mass list to all, uh, an email to all those people on the list saying, guess what artists, public art artists, here's, what, here's a new one coming. So you can always contact me, I'll put you on that list. Uh, and you can also look on our Facebook pages. Um, they're, they're also very quick to uh, post those, those percent for art opportunities that are available. That's all I got. <laughs> Like for projects, like in your example where only fifteen thousand dollars of one hundred and fifty was used, I just wonder like what happens with the rest of the budget, and do um, like within like the proposal process, do projects that are closer to utilizing all of the budget, is it like more of a benefit to like utilize all of it, or are like projects that utilize less of it more? So, um, so I miscommunicated that it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget but maybe you only want to put up two pieces of art that are worth $15,000. So they take that in, under consideration so they can buy other other proposals, basically. 150 has to be used. It's okay. earmarked. It has to be used. Generally, what we do, we're sitting there with our calculators on the third one going, but what if we put this one here? What if we put this one here? And they want this much, and they want this much. We're figuring out how to come down to the penny. So sometimes you're going to be awarded um, and you've asked for fifteen thousand. You're going to get fifteen thousand four hundred and twelve dollars and sixty-two cents. So sometimes, you know what I mean? We have to make it all add up, and it has to all work. So no matter what, that that entire money is going to be spent. Yeah. So uh, is it mandatory for um, a public building of a certain size to to have that percent for art, or is it upon request of the developer or the architect? If state uh, money has been put into it, it's 1%. The only exception to that are that public schools, through a very uh, rigorous process, can ask to be um, uh, let out of that law because they're under extreme um, fiscal circumstances that they just can't afford to put um, money back into it. They need it for other resources. I should also say that schools can cap it at $50,000, which is generally what most of them do. So we're working with a $50,000 budget for most schools. 
Um, I'm interested in how much feedback can an artist get about the review process? I mean, can they, can they attend the session or ask for, you know, if you want to know the strengths and weaknesses of your application? So we'll, what we do is, yes, you can attend. <clears throat> they are public. Um, and the feedback that we don't take notes for every uh, proposal that comes um, before the, the committee. So we don't dictate what they're saying. But what I can do is they are scoring your application by specific criteria. So if you didn't get picked and you wanted to find out what happened, why did it get picked, I can send you the numbers. I can say, well, here's, here's how you scored under all these criteria to give you a sense of what was strong in your application and maybe what was weak. If I'm an artist in Portland, for example, and I'm interested in submitting a proposal, um, does it make sense for me to advocate for more um, projects locally, or or does it really all go through the state? Like in terms of the percent for art program, like would it make sense to create a percent for art program specific to a city, or is it now that we have the main umbrella, do all the projects all across Maine go through you? Um. <clears throat> yeah, we work at the we work at the state level, and so your Portland is up to the um, whether or not there's any construction going on. I can tell you, there's a lot of basically uh, K through 12 um, schools that are being built or renovated. So it, it falls upon where where the construction is located in the state. So I would say um, advocate for um, getting a percent for our ordinance passed in Portland. So, you know, it can be done at the city level as well as at the state level. I just have a comment. I'm Anne Marie, and I also work with Julie on uh, managing some of the state funded projects. And I would just say if you're an artist that's intimidated by the public art process or you don't consider yourself a public art artist, don't let that deter you from applying. Julie is really supportive, as well as the Diamond, of um, shepherding artists through the process and really um, advocating for studio artists to venture into the public art field. So absolutely. Please utilize all of us <laughs> to help you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what we what we do is we are public servants. I always say this about everything that the Maine Arts Commission does, and that we are public servants so it's our job to help you do the best that you can so um, you can absolutely call me and ask me what I feel like would make a good um, competitive um, proposal again I don't vote I don't I'm only there as the administrator so I don't get to vote but I can tell you well based on other you know uh, review committees I've been for here's a tendency of what they, they look for one really quick tip about that as well is that I think it's always and it also comes down to that fifteen thousand dollar thing it's always good to offer up in your proposals alternatives or options because sometimes a committee will have hundred fifty thousand dollars and some artists come in and say I want hundred fifty hundred fifty thousand dollars flat that's it I want the whole shebang nothing wrong with that but it's usually the artists that offer up some options that say, you know, I'd like $150,000 for what I'm doing, but I'll go to location one and do it for $20,000. I'll take location three and do it for $20,000. You know, location four, I'll do forty. dollars And that way, the, uh, the selection committee can kind of cherry pick um, how they want to do it. You've made it very clear to them that that's acceptable. Because a lot of times, the selection committee, they want diversity in their space. It's rare that they say, we love this one artist so much. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna keep it consistent and use this one artist throughout the entire space. So I think off, don't overwhelm them with options, but it's good to to have some um, negotiating points with them too. Okay, thanks, Amory. Oh, one more. Um, are, are all of these public projects that you, the art piece you're going for, are they they're private and commercial? And um, is there, uh, what are the mediums that typically get Utilized. So I'm, I'm glad you you said that because when I saw the um, the title for the this um, uh, summit, I said, "Wow, temp to permanent, we fit in the permanent category." So public art using public funds has to be permanent. We don't fund temporary at all. 
And they're very, I'll say this, it's very limited in what they consider art. It's very classical paintings, sculpture, you know, carving, print, that, that type of stuff, unfortunately. Can you just tell what the difference between um, permanent and temporary, what the uh, year is? Some people may not know. What so how do we define it? Yeah. Um, it has to be a piece of artwork that remains in the site permanently, like an actual object. No, I mean, because um, locally, if there's like a 10 year to 15 uh, for what's considered. What is permanent? Yeah. Yeah, what is permanent? Because some dictate and say it's 20, it has to be 25 years. It has to last at least 25. Oh, yeah, we don't, we don't set any, well, we, as the main arts commission, we don't set parameters around that. However, the site gets to, gets to make the contract. Okay. And so the site itself may say, we want it to last X amount of years, or we want it to basically be maintenance free. I want a warranty on that work for the next 15 years. The main arts commission doesn't dictate that. The contract with the site does. Thank you. Hi. Um, has, has 1% for art ever funded collaborative opportunities? And I'm asking because um, I'm thinking about, you know, certainly in the schools, the kids who go to school in that community um, and collaborating with teaching artists that might become a, a permanent project in their school. Has that ever been funded? So it can be, um, really quickly, it can be one artist or it can be a design team. And it, yes, they can. We have that happen quite often where an artist is going into a school. It can be a lot of school, school um, projects. So um, if you're an artist in your proposal, you still need to propose something. And you can say, I want to bring in teachers and students. Um, uh, that's not that's not a no no. That's actually um, pretty good. We we do ask that you get um, that you don't involve them in the in the initial proposal process. So what we don't want you doing is going to our teachers during the first round and saying I want to work with you and your students. Um, we only ask that that be part of your proposed idea for moving forward with your process. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah.